Imagine transforming a $100,000 investment potentially grow into $23,733,802 over the next 30 years. Welcome back, finance enthusiasts. Today, we're setting the stage for an epic showdown between two ETF titans, Triple Q and S&P 500. Are you ready to discover which ETF can supercharge your dividends and boost your financial future? Stick around because the latest data from July 2024 might just blow your mind. We're diving deep into a critical comparison that could redefine your investment strategy. If you're an income-focused investor, you know the thrill of finding high yields and stellar payout ratios. In this video, you'll uncover the precise dividend yields of QQQ and the S&P 500 ETFs as of July 2024. We'll peel back the layers on payout ratios, revealing how much of their earnings these ETFs are pumping directly into your pocket. Brace yourself for the numbers. One of them has a payout ratio of around 50%, delivering consistent income to its shareholders. But that's not all. We'll also compare performance and risk, helping you determine which ETF aligns with your financial goals. By the end of the video, you'll be armed with the knowledge to choose the ETF that can potentially double your dividend income. Whether you're aiming for explosive growth with QQQ or the rock solid stability with the S&P 500, we've got the insights you need. Imagine your $100,000 investment today growing into over $356,000 seven dollars in dividends alone over the next 30 years so smash that like button hit subscribe and let's dive into this electrifying showdown to discover your ticket to higher dividends spdr s p 500 etf spy the s p 500 is a stock market index that tracks the performance of 500 of the largest companies listed on stock exchanges in the united states representing a broad spectrum of industries one popular investment vehicle for accessing the S&P 500 is the SPDR 500 S&P ETF Trust SPY. Over the last decade, SPY has delivered an average annual return of approximately 12.86%, making it an attractive option for investors seeking steady growth. When evaluating SPY, Harry noticed the expense ratio is quite low at 0.09%, meaning that for every $1,000 invested, only 90 cents are paid in fees annually. This low expense ratio is beneficial as it allows more of Harry's investment to remain in the fund, compounding over time. Additionally, SPY offers a dividend yield of around 1.5%, providing a modest income stream alongside capital appreciation. Harry delved deeper into the fund's holdings and found that SPY includes prominent companies such as Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. These tech giants constitute a significant portion of the fund, with Apple alone making up roughly 7% of the total assets. The growth rate of these companies has been impressive, contributing to SPY's robust performance. For instance, Apple's revenue grew by approximately 33% in 2021, while Microsoft's revenue increased by 18%. Another key metric Harry examined was the compound annual growth rate of the S&P 500 over the past 10 years, the CAGR of SPY has been around 13.6%, reflecting the consistent long-term growth potential of the index. This rate of return highlights the index's ability to outperform many other investment options, particularly in a diversified portfolio. Furthermore, Harry considered the payout ratio of the companies within SPY. The average payout ratio, which indicates the proportion of earnings paid out as dividends, is about 36%. This relatively low payout ratio suggests that companies are retaining a significant portion of their earnings to reinvest in growth opportunities, which can be advantageous for long-term capital appreciation. Harry also looked at the overall growth rate of S&P 500. Historically, the index has shown an average annual return growth rate of about 8-10%, to adjusting for inflation. This growth rate has made the S&P 500 a cornerstone for many long-term investors seeking to build wealth over time. In conclusion, Harry found the S&P 500, particularly through SPY, to be a compelling investment choice due to its low expense ratio, strong historical performance, and exposure to high-growth companies. With a diversified mix of sectors and a track record of consistent returns, the S&P 500 aligns well with the Harry's investment goals, offering both growth and income potential. By investing in SPY, Harry can leverage the collective strength of 500 leading companies, positioning himself for long-term financial success. Invesco Triple Q ETF. This ETF tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, which includes a hundred of the largest non financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock market. Known for its heavy weighting in the technology sector, the Triple Q is an appealing option for those looking to capitalize on the growth of tech giants. Over the past decade, the Triple Q has delivered an impressive compound and annual growth rate of approximately 20%, significantly outperforming many other major indices. This stellar performance is driven by its top holdings, including companies like Apple. Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet. For instance, as the latest data 
Apple constitutes about 12.8% of the total assets and Microsoft at 9.9%, Amazon at 6.8% and Alphabet at 7.3%. This growth rate of the companies are remarkable in 2021. Apple's revenue grew by 33% while Microsoft's revenue increased by 18%. Perry is also attracted to the triple Q's relatively low expense ratio of 0.20%. For every $1,000 invested, only $2 are paid in fees annually. This low expense ratio ensures that more of Harry's money is working for him, compound over time. The ETF's focus on high growth technology and consumer discretionary companies has been a key driver of its strong performance. The payout ratio of the companies within Triple Q is another critical metric for Harry. The average payout ratio, which indicates the proportion of earnings paid out as dividends, is about 27%. This payout ratio well, suggests that these companies are reinvesting a significant portion of their earnings back into the business to fuel further growth, which can be advantageous for long term capital appreciation. In terms of dividend yield, the triple Q offers a modest 0.5%. While this is lower than the yield offered by more traditional indices like the S&P 500, the triple Q's focus is on capital growth rather than income. This aligns well with Harry's investment strategy, which prioritizes growth over dividend income. Moreover, the triple Q's performance during market fluctuations is worth noting. During the 2020 market crash, the triple Q fell by approximately 30%, highlighting its higher volatility compared to more diversified indices. However, its recovery was swift and robust, reflecting the resilience and growth potential of its underlying companies. Overall, Harry finds the Invesco Triple Q ETF to be compelling investment choice due to its high CAGR, low expense ratio, and exposure to some of the most innovative and fastest growing companies in the world. Despite its higher volatility and lower dividend yield, the potential for significant capital appreciation makes Triple Q an attractive option for Harry's portfolio. By investing in Triple Q, Harry can leverage the growth of leading tech and consumer companies, positioning himself for long term financial success. Long term growth projections. Long-term growth of S&P 500. Harry is considering investing $100,000 in the S&P 500, especially through the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust. To understand the potential long-term growth and income from this investment, we will analyze projections for 1, 5, 10, 20, and 30 years, using historical average annual returns and current dividend yields. If Harry invests $100,000 in SPY, with an average annual return of approximately 12.86%, his investment would grow to about $112,860 after one year. Additionally, with a dividend yield of 1.5%, he would receive around $1,500 in dividends over the year. Over 50 years, the investment would continue to compound using the average annual return. Harry's $100,000 investment could grow to approximately $182,282. The dividend income over five years would be around a total of $8,975. Assuming the dividends are reinvested and grow at the same rate as the principal investment. After 10 years, the power of compounding becomes more evident. Harry's investment could grow to about $295,074. During this period, the total dividend income would amount to around $20,505, again, assuming reinvestment of dividends and consistent growth. For a longer term horizon of 20 years, the investment could grow significantly based on the average annual return. The $100,000 could potentially grow to about $870,550. The total dividend income over these 20 years would be approximately $58,603, contributing to the overall growth to the investment. Looking at a 30-year investment period, the growth is even more substantial. Harry's $100,000 could potentially go to around $2,569,264. The cumulative dividend income over 30 years would be approximately $175,000. $1,886, significantly enhancing the total value of his investment. Growth projections of Triple Q ETF. Harry is also considering investing $100,000 in the Invesco Triple Q ETF, which has shown higher historical returns but comes with greater volatility. With an average annual return of approximately 20%, Harry's $100,000 investment in Triple Q could grow to about $120,000 after one year. However, the dividend yield is lower at 0.5%, resulting in around $500 in dividends for the first year. Over five years, the investment in Triple Q could grow to approximately $248,832 given the higher return average. The total dividend income over these five years would be about $6,283, assuming reinvestment of dividends. For a 10-year period, Harry's investment could grow significantly to around $619,174. The total dividend income over 10 years would be about $15,228, adding to the overall investment value. 
and a 20-year horizon, the compounding effect is profound. Harry's $100,000 investment could grow to approximately $3,841,600. Over these 20 years, the total dividend income would be about $115,248, assuming dividends are reinvested. Over 30 years, Harry's investment in Triple Q could potentially grow to around $23,733,802. The total dividend income over these 30 years would approximately be $356,007, significantly boosting the investment's overall value. Both the S&P 500 and the Triple Q offer a substantial long-term growth potential. The S&P 500 provides a balanced approach with moderate growth and steady dividends, while Triple Q offers higher growth with more volatility and lower dividends. Harry's choice should align with his risk tolerance, investment goals, and the importance of income versus growth in his portfolio strategy. Understanding the Market Dynamics of SPY Harry, interested in the SPDR 500 S&P ETF Trust, should be aware of his, well, market dynamics. Historically, the S&P 500 is considered a moderate risk investment due to its broad diversification across 500 large-cap U.S. companies. The volatility measured by standard deviation has typically ranged from 15% per year. For instance, during the 2020 market crash, SPY dropped approximately 20%, demonstrating its exposure to significant market downturns. Despite this, the S&P 500 rebounded quickly, showcasing resilience due to the strength of its constituent companies. A notable instance of volatility was the 2008 financial crisis when SPY experienced a decline of over 36%. Despite such downturns, the S&P 500 has consistently recovered and grown over the long term, making it a reliable choice for long-term investors. The ETF's beta, a measure of its volatility relative to the market, is close to 1, indicating the SPY tends to move in line with the overall market. The fund's expense ratio is low at 0.09%, minimizing costs and maximizing returns over investors like Harry. Additionally, SPY's dividend yield of around 1.5% provides a steady income stream, albeit lower than some other income-focused investments. The payout ratio of its constitute companies averages around 36%, indicating that companies are retaining a significant portion of earnings for reinvestment supporting future growth. Navigating the ups and downs of Triple Q when considering the Invesco Triple Q ETF, Harry should note its higher risk and volatility profile compared to the S&P 500. Triple Q focuses on the Nasdaq 100, which is heavily weighted towards technology and growth-oriented companies. The sector concentration results in higher volatility with standard deviations, often exceeding 20%. During the 2020 market crash, Triple Q dropped about 30% within a few weeks, highlighting its susceptibility to market swings. However, its rapid recovery was driven by the resilience and growth of tech giants such as Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Historically, Triple Q has shown impressive performance, but with significant fluctuations. For example, in the early 2000s, during the dot-com bubble, Triple Q experienced a sharp decline of nearly 80% from its peak, taking years to recover fully. Despite these setbacks, the ETF's long-term growth potential remains strong. Thanks to its focus on high growth sectors, Triple Q's expense ratio is 0.20%, slightly higher than SPY, but still relatively low. The dividend yield of Triple Q is modest at 0.5%, reflecting its focus on capital appreciation rather than income. The average payout ratio of its top holdings is around 27%, with companies reinvesting a large portion of earnings to fuel further growth. In summary, while SPY offers moderate risk and steady growth, Triple Q offers higher growth potential with increased volatility. Harry's choice should align with his risk tolerance and investment goals, balancing the need for growth investment against the comfort level with market fluctuations. If you found this analysis helpful, make sure to like and share the video with fellow investors. Your support helps us bring more valuable insights to you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more detailed investment guides and market updates. In conclusion, choosing between the S&P 500 and Triple Q depends on your risk tolerance and investment goals. SPY offers stability and steady growth. While Triple Q provides higher growth potential with more volatility, evaluate your financial objectives and make an informed decision that aligns with your investment strategy. Happy investing!